Hi everyone, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine. As you can see, I'm working on Henry again. But if you watch my updates, you already know that this page is done. So you know by deduction that I have recorded this previously. So actually, uh, this is Saturday, last Saturday, that I'm recording this, if you're watching it the day that it's published. So, but this is a really good, pro what I'm working on right now is something that's really easy to work on while talking to you guys, because it's all one color, I don't have to follow a pattern, because it is solid stitching. I'm down to the last color on the page. It is the solid stitching for Henry's cloak. And as you can see, whoop, I'm sorry, I hit the, hit the thing. All of the confetti is done. So what I like to do, what I try to do, but sometimes the confetti gets the best of me and I have to give myself a break from the confetti. But this time it worked as I did all of the confetti first. And now I'm rewarding myself with some mindless solid stitching. Now I know many, many people complain about solid stitching. I don't mind it. Just like how many, many people complain about back stitching and there's many people that don't mind back stitching. I don't mind solid stitch, solid colored stitching because I'm able to do it quickly and I don't have to focus on a pattern. I can just stitch. And I can do other things such as talk to you all. So, I keep forgetting every time I do a video to tell you all what the, the, the fabric and everything is. This is 28 count white Lugana. And I'm stitching one over one. With the called for DMC, this is a heaven and earth design. It's Henry VIII. The painting is by Hans Holbein. I'm currently working on... There's a total of 30 pages for this pattern. Since I have not gone in order, I'm working on the 16th page of 30. It's not number 16 in the pattern, but it's number 16 for what I have actually stitched. And this will be the fourth page finish. This was the fourth page finish because obviously uh, in the future, when you're watching this, this page is already complete. It, this is the fourth page finish for 2018. This page took roughly a week and a half, almost two weeks to stitch because of the amount of confetti plus just with everything else going on in my life. There was a lot, it just, there was a lot of days that I had very little stitching. I think I stitched on him almost every day for those week and a half, two weeks, but many days I might have only done one or two colors and was just like, I can't stitch anymore today. So... I'm very happy with my progress on him and I had said before I started this page that I was going to take a break from him and then I kept having him call to me and I'm hoping that I'm ready now to work on some other things so we'll see how long that lasts maybe by the time you're watching this I'm already back to Henry who knows but I do know there are some projects that I would really like to work on and get some 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 work done on. Plus the next four pages that I have to do. So the next two pages in each row. So right here, you're not going to be able to see. So up here and down here is a lot of confetti. A lot more than what I had in this arm just because it is his shirt. 
and there is a lot of confetti in his shirt. So. But I would like to really get him focused. Uh, he is a focus for a finish for this year. Will I get him done? We will see. The way I'm going right now, being a monogamous stitcher, it's very possible. It, it leads for very boring videos, but... Um, I would, it definitely would be a big finish this year if, if I could get him done. These two rows are the most dense of confetti as well. So the last row, the row underneath this page, should not take nearly as long as these pages are taking just because the confetti there is confetti but it's not nearly as dense as these pages so what i thought i would talk to you today is you all know that I'm a teacher and I'm a special ed teacher but I never really went into much detail about what I do because I had to really consider ethically what I can and cannot say because of all of the laws protecting privacy and of course I'm not going to say any students names I'm not going to say anything that would give any any inkling away as to who my students are or anything like that. But I wanted to give you guys a better idea of the type of services I provide because when you hear of a teacher, you think of a gen what you know of, what your experiences of a teacher growing up in school. But what I do is actually very different than than what typical public or even private school teachers do. So I do work for a private school. It is, it is a school uh, within a larger company, private company in South Jersey. And we, our company, uh, focuses on individuals who have intellectual and developmental disabilities, as well as traumatic brain injuries from birth until death. So we, we help with early intervention all the way up to we have a senior living facility we call our our retirement home for our our clients we also have a a, a program that focuses on individuals that have had traumatic brain injuries that are s debilitating and they help with with rehabilitation and reteaching life skills to those individuals. So what I do at the school is I foc uh, my my classroom focuses primarily on 19 to 21 year olds. So I work with adults, but they because they have an intellectual or uh, d developmental disability or multiply disabled because most of our students have autism as well as another de develop another disability so they're most of them are multiply disabled we focus on so my my because they have an IEP which is an individualized education plan they have the right to education until they're 21 and then the year of their 21st birthday they they age out and then they would move into an adult placement so what my what my classroom does and i'm one of 12 classrooms in the school that works with this age level we um and we work with them we have classroom lessons you know typical math language arts science social studies technology as well as 21st century skills, which are those skills such as vocational skills, life skills, 
uh, you know, um, we'll get in, more into that in a minute here. But so, but then all of my lessons that I teach are not what you would think of as a math or a language arts lesson. I, I focus on what they would do to get them ready for adult life. So what they would do as an adult. So we watch the news. We read the newspaper. We, we might read equipment manuals to, on how to operate a, a piece of equipment. Because, you know, as an adult, you might come into, you might go to Ikea and need to learn how to put together something. And so you have to learn how to, you, you have to know how to understand the manual. Now, of course, my students might not be able to understand that fully, but at least we're exposing them to possibilities. In math, we work focus on making purchases, counting items, determining what the best price is for an item. A lot of those things that they might do in the community as, you know, ordering ad, ordering drinks at you know, or at a restaurant or, you know, whatever they might do as an adult. Just stretching a minute here. I went to the gym today and my, my muscles are a little sore. So whenever I'm stitching here, I'm getting cramping up a bit. And then we also focus on teaching vocational skills because all of my students have job internships. So we job sample them for jobs that they might be interested in and we help them learn the skills that they would need for those jobs and then the staff that, that, that work with them take them to their jobs either on campus or off campus and we build them up to having jobs daily so that they can again be prepared for when they graduate and they move into an adult placement now most of my students never will have gainful paid employment so what we're preparing them for is mainly adult placements that are uh Adult day programs, very similar to what they do in school, where they'll they'll have lessons, they'll have internships, they'll also like have have do activities to take them into the community, stuff like that. And then one of the nice things is that I get to take them on. You know how in most schools, I don't maybe you don't know, but. In most schools, one, at least for me, one of the excitements was get, getting to go on field trips, which was few and far between. Well, with my students, we get to go on a field trip, which we call a community-based instruction, or CBI. We get to do that once a week. So every week we get to go out into the community for an hour and a half or two hours, and we get to expose the students to activities in the community that you know typical everyday life things that that you and I take for granted but they they struggle with doing navigating a mall and finding the bathrooms finding the entrance and exits finding the cash registers making purchases ordering food at a fast food restaurant or at a coffee shop going to a museum going to a park Trying to think what else we we expose them to. Some of our some of our classrooms go to the movies, teaching them skills to to incorporate themselves into society so that they they have those social skills where they don't have behaviors uh, that make them stick out. And not appear to be as you know normal like everybody else. And I just lost my thread, so that means I need to get a new one. So let's pause for a moment while 
I switched my thread out. There you can see the back of Henry. Almost ready. Hope you're all stitching or knitting. Okay. I think I'm going to start down here first just to get my needle started. And then we also have special events within the school to teach them skills such as voting. So we'll have mock elections. We'll have sales in the school as well as we have our own market. So many of our students work in the market, stocking shelves, running the cash registers. And we have other uh, store-based market uh, jobs such as a greenhouse and garden center and um, so it's it's a great place for students that really struggle to to build their skills up on an individualized basis and so within to to give you a broader idea of how how students get to my school Within the state of New Jersey, and I know many other school uh, states in the country do, I'm not sure if, what each state's requirements are, but if a student it has struggles within a school district and they can't, they can't fully implement their, ed their education plan or their IEP to the best of their ability, they may seek an external school to... to um, what am I trying to say? To send the student to, to individualize the le their 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 schooling for that student. So each one of our students have their own set of goals for every subject that they have to work on on a daily or weekly basis. So while I have seven students in my classroom, every single one of them are working on different skills for each subject. So I have to, if I want to do full group lessons, I have to teach the full group lesson. And then whenever we're working on the skill that we're teaching on, we have to, individ we have to generalize that to each student in order to meet their needs. I hope that makes sense. So at my school, I'm also in charge of graduation 
as well as the graduation trip. So I've currently, I've really been busy. I know it's only February, but we've already been planning since November for graduation because of we have to find the venue because we don't have a venue in our building that's big enough for graduation. We don't have a stage, so we have to seek outside places. So we've been busy doing that as well as planning the actual event because we like, since we are a private school, we still like to offer all of the same things that any other school does. So we have a prom, we have graduation, we have school dances on a quarterly basis, we have a student government that I'm also in charge of, and our students that are graduating get to go on a graduation trip every year. So I'm also currently planning that, which takes up a lot of time because it's uh, again, a str we have to find something that will accommodate all of our students and their their unique needs. So while it can be a lot of work and it's stressful, it's also a lot of fun because it's just every day is a, a completely different experience. You never know what you're going to walk into on a daily basis. So it keeps you on your toes. And I like that. I mean, I, I, I'm one I'm a person who I can't sit still, so I could never sit in an office job or a cubicle job. You know, kudos to those that do. That is not my cup of tea. I like to be on the go and doing new and different things every day, so So I'm really happy that all of you are enjoying the Stitch With Me videos as well as interacting with each other on the Facebook group, Friday Off The Grid. Off The Grid, Friday Party, I, I don't know, I'll link it because, you know, I can never remember that for some reason. Anyways, uh, you know, it's been, it's been awesome seeing all the different projects that everyone's working on and reading all the, the comments and the encouragement that everyone's giving. And I, I, I really want to thank everyone for keeping it positive and uplifting I know that's one thing that Caroline has was that was one of her big focuses on was just to make it a fun, positive place for everyone to bring their stitching. Whatever stitching that may be, because obviously we all know I'm learning how to knit. So I know I am looking for forward to spring. We had a taste of spring this past week, meaning a week and a half ago, if you're watching this video. And it was such a tease and almost torture because then it went right back to 40s and rain and oh it was so miserable but we know that that nice weather is on the way and I'm sorry all of you so southern hemisphere people because 
yeah, you're going into the cold months, and I, 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 I feel for you. So I want to thank you again all for for subscribing and liking, commenting, giving me encouragement for my channel. Thank you all so very much. If you have any ideas or any in, uh, questions you would like me to answer or topics of discussion for our Stitch With Me videos, please let me know in the comments below or private message me on Instagram. I would love to hear them because while I love doing these videos, it can sometimes be a struggle to find content to talk about while we're stitching. Because you can only talk about the fabric and the colors and the threads that you're using so much. So if you have any topics and, you know, as I can always find a tag online to do, but I know a lot of those tags that are online are written more for high school girls or, I don't know, just not really relevant to our group. So please, if you have any questions, comments, or questions or topics, please let me, let the group know on Facebook because I know I'm not the only one that struggles with finding content to talk about. And unlike Caroline and Michelle Bendy, I do struggle with filling time talking. And I know they're laughing right now, so that was no, that was not a a, a barb at them, because I struggle with talking a lot of times. While I love to talk, um, it's hard for me to find things that are relevant to talk about on here. So, yeah. Anyways. Thank you again all very, very much. We're going to end the video here, and I hope you have a happy weekend of full of stitching and enjoying every stitch. We'll see you next time, guys. And girls.